Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of short summary lectures. My name is Aravind and today the main topic is about planning, controlling and leading a project. Under this topic, we will be learning about design system and plans for initiating, managing and leading a project. Topics that we will be covering today are importance of leadership in project management, project structure and team members, role and responsibilities of a project manager, sources of finance, project funding, and project feasibility assessment. Importance of leadership. Leadership can be viewed as providing direction, creating a vision, influencing others to share that vision and work towards achievement of the organization goals. Well, if I can ask you a question, why are we still talking about famous leaders such as Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, or even Abraham Lincoln? Well, because the answer is there. They had a vision. They gave us a direction and they influenced the people to follow and to work towards that common mission. Similarly, when it comes to a project management, a person needs to have these three qualities. And there are several leadership styles that have been referred to by person to person and leadership itself it's a broader topic well the leaderships can be categorized or leadership styles can be categorized into six ways transactional interactional laissez-faire transformational charismatic and servant leader what is transactional well it is about supervision where they use reward and punishment to ensure that the people are working so explicit goals for the team that everyone should work towards accomplishing, more like a supervision. Interaction where based on circumstances, they change. This leadership style is a dynamic as it changes based on the situation at hand. Let's say fair where they give the full freedom to the team members to set up the goals and objective. One of the risks is that you will not be able to have a control over the operation. Transformational leaders are where they inspire the team members with ideal goals and encourage them to change the project environment for better. Charismatic leaders are where with their charm and interpersonal relationship, they're trying to inspire people or convince people. Servant leader is where they work for the team members, where they try to get rid of all the roadblocks and they try to help in terms of achieving the objective. So being a project manager, probably you will be able to now see where you will fall under when it comes to a leadership style. Project structure and team members. Similar to an organization, a project will also will have a hierarchical structure. It is important because it addresses the authority or who takes the direction or who takes the decision. And also it creates a series of superior subordinate relationships so each individual or groups has only one boss. If you look at the image on the right hand side where you have the hierarchical structure, there's a project sponsor, project owner, project customer, project manager, and a project team member. Project sponsor provides resources for the project. Project owner interested in end result being achieved. Project customer would be the person who will be using the project or he will be the end user whether project management is the person who is ultimately responsible for the project the project team is where who will be working on the project itself the organizational structure of a project team clearly identifies the roles and responsibility of each position you can see it on the right there is a structure being given where each people will have their roles and responsibility defined. Establishing an effective project management structure is crucial for its success. I mean, there are several structures that you can see. You can have the horizontal, vertical, functional structures, but it is up to you to understand, depending on the size of the project, which structure to be used. As a project is normally cross-functional, cross-functional means where you get people from different departments within your organization. For example, you may have the marketing department, the finance department, you have the administration. So you put together as one team is called cross-functional team. So as a project, 
is normally cross-functional and involves partnership, its structure needs to be more flexible and is likely to require a broad base of skills for a specified period of time. Now we come to the role and responsibilities of a project manager. Before we get into this, we need to know what is a role and what is a responsibility. Role means where the, the position, what you take on a team. And responsibility is basically your task and duties that you need to carry out. So role of a project manager is that you have a planning, you execute it, you, are, you have to monitor, and you also have to control. And responsibilities of a project manager is that ensure all project objectives are achieved, which is more important. Planning, monitoring, and controlling of the project will depend on you. Selecting, building, and motivating the team. Again, it is your responsibility. Serving as a point of contact with management hierarchy. You will be the person who will be liaising with the client as well as uh, with your team members and making decisions relating to the system and resources. Project funding, source of fund, uh, funds. Well, if the project to be successful, we will also need to ensure that the project is properly or adequately financed. And the way it can be financed, three ways. One is through organic growth, or you may call it as your own savings, through debt and by equity. Retain earnings are something like the profits that you have already earned where you're trying to utilize for a project. Debt is where you borrow money from a financial institution. It can be of a bank overdraft, term loans, or maybe debentures, which is something that is more than 12 months. Equity, it's considered to be one of the costly method of raising the finance where you might have to issue shares to the ordinary shareholders or maybe even preference shareholders. Depending on your gearing level of the company, you will be able to mix and match as to which sources of finance that you're planning to use to fund the particular project. And it is utmost necessary at the time when the requirement is there, the funds also needs to be available. There are other sources of finance is also made available, such as venture capital, angel investors, and government grants. Project feasibility assessment. A business organization should select the project by considering the feasibility of the proposed project and the risk and uncertainty associated with it. So whenever we do a feasibility assessment, it is important to know what are the benefits and the benefits must outweigh the cost and the other factors. Well, a project can be of assist in the following way, the feasibility side of it, technical feasibility, financial feasibility, operational feasibility, and ecological feasibility. When we say technical feasibility, we are asking whether we have that adequate technology or whether this particular technology is it tried it or tested. Financial feasibility is where are we or do we have that sufficient resources, sufficient finance, and whether the cost is more than the benefit. If that is the case, we should not go ahead with it. Operational feasibility is where we are talking about in terms of the skill requirement whether the staff or the members who are part of the team, do they have the necessary skill? For example, if it is a computerized environment, do they have the technological or the computerized skill to carry out that project? Ecological feasibility is where, whether or, or what sort of an impact are we creating in an environment? Or are we having any issues with regard to the environment if we are undertaking this particular project? So this is what is referred to as feasibility when it comes to project assessment. Thank you.